And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Edgar Bergen back with our perennial bachelor girl, Effie Klinker. <laughs> I'd like you to meet Frank and Bobby Rouser of Pasadena, California. Frank, what do you do? I'm a house painter. Frank, how, how did you and Bobby, how did you meet? Well, I was painting a house back in Pittsburgh in 31, and it was a hot, sultry day, and uh, I needed a drink of water, so there had one bathroom there where we used to always get a drink of water, so I moved the ladder over and up the ladder and not thinking the shade was pulled, I reached in and grabbed a hold of the string and snapped the shade up. Yeah? There she was, getting out of the tub, dripping wet. <laughs> oh, dear. I must get my house painted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now, that was embarrassing. What did you do? Well, I didn't know what to do. Why didn't I... you say, pardon me, sir? Is this the right road to Harrisburg or something? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, well now, what happened after that? Well, I went down and apologized and asked her for a date. Yeah. She said yes. <laughs> so... Well, yeah. then, you, then there seems to be a lot in this, in this first impression, you know. <laughs> Yeah. And then what happened? Well, we've seen quite a lot of each other. You uh, see. <laughs> Have you ever had an experience like that, Effie? Well, no, but once a man tried to peek in my window. Yes. Oh, it was ex a terrible. Terrible, yes. Yeah, but he was too short. He was too short. <laughs> what did you do? I just put a ladder outside. You put a ladder outside. <laughs> What happened? He stole the ladder. He stole it. <laughs> well, Bobby, how long was it before you two got married then? Oh, five years. Five years. Well, uh, what took so long then? Well, the, every time we planned or made plans, yeah. Frank would have an accident. Have an accident. Mm -hmm. Well, now, what kind of an accident did you have, Frank? Well, the first time we planned to get married, I, I fell off a ladder. Oh, you're the one, are you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then after that, after you fell off the ladder, then you got married, huh? Well, we planned again. Yeah. I was walking across the roof, and the roof gave away. <laughs> I found myself in the room below. Yeah, I see. In the bathroom, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, after that, you got married. No, I had uh. still another accident. <laughs> well, of course, after that, you got married. Yes, finally, after I recovered. Bobby, obviously, the worst is behind you now. Oh, yes, very much so. I have two children, Barbara, 12, and Frank is 16. Oh, fine. And uh, since I'm out here, I've joined the Contesters Club. Well, uh, what is a Contesters Club? Well, it's a group of uh, national uh, organization of people that uh, enter contests. I see. And uh, ours is called the Enthusiast of San Gabriel Valley. You know, I think I'll run a contest for men only. Yes, I thought so. Well, now, what, what would you have them do? Oh, I don't know. I'd have them complete a limit. Yes. I want to marry Effie Clinker because... Yes. In case of a tie... Boom, 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 boom! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, now, what do you have to do to be eligible? Just be eligible as... Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> and remember... All contestants become the property of Effie Clinker. Oh, I imagine so, yes. Well, now it's time to play Do You Trust Your Wife? And I'll see you a little later, Effie. All right. But before I go, I'd like to say something to my male admirers. Yes, what is it? Where are you? All right. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Rouser, you can win up to $1,200 in cash tonight on your way to our trust fund question. Your first correct answer is worth $100. There are the questions, Edgar. Well, Frank, for your first question, we want to find out how much you know about your wife. Will you both please go to the board behind you? Frank, if your wife picked up a choice bit of gossip and, it was, to and was told to keep it a secret, would she keep it to herself? Would she tell her best friend? Or would she spread it all over town? Now, you would just write down either keep, tell, or spread. And, Bobby, you write down what you would actually do. Keep, tell, or spread. He wrote keep, and she wrote keep. Keep. <laughs> 
You now have $100. Your next correct answer will be worth $200. The subject of your second question is women in sports. Do you trust yourself or do you trust your wife? I trust my wife. All right. <laughs> One of the greatest women athletes of all time is Babe Dietrichson. What is her married name? The Harriet. That is right. The you now have $300 and your next correct answer will be worth $300. The subject of your third question is books and authors. Do you trust yourself or do you trust your wife? I still trust my wife. Yes, you're doing all right. One of Victor Hugo's most famous characters was Jean Valjean. In what novel was he the central figure? I don't know. Well, it was Les Miserables. Oh, Edgar, the Rousers have won $300, and they may now risk all of it, none of it, or part of it on our board question. Now, do you wish to select a category? Mm -hmm. We'll pick the $200 question. $200, and do you mm -hmm. trust yourself, or do you trust your wife? I still trust my wife. American folklore. What is the name of the giant lumberjack who, with the help of his blue ox babe, performed various superhuman feats? Well, it was Paul Bunyan. And the Rousers have a grand total of $100. And now it's time for our trust fund question. Say, look what the inspector has there, kids. What? Why, look at that. It's a, it's a big sign, kids. Yes, sir, it's a big sign, and it says, where? And, and I'll tell you what it means. Now, sometimes... You and I wake up in the morning feeling pretty blue. No special reason. You just wake up uh, feeling mad or, well, mad at the world. And that's not too good. I worried about it for years, and then I found the answer. I just closed my eyes, and I imagined a special place where everybody's happy all the time. You know what it's called? It's called Tweedledee Town. And whenever I felt bad, that's where I went. That's where Tweedledee Town and I sang the Tweedledee song. A and it goes like this. Oh, Tweedledee dum dum, Tweedledee dum dum, Tweedledee dum dum, Tweedledee dum dum, Tweedledee dee 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 Tweedledee dum dum. When friends get together, they don't find the weather. A wintry night turns into spring as soon as they begin to sing. Hey, Tweedledee dum dum, Tweedledee dum dum, Tweedledee dum dum, Tweedledee dum dum, Tweedledee dee 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 Tweedledee dum dum. Yes, sir, kids, that was the song. And you know, when I opened my eyes, kids, you know where I was? Right here. Only all of a sudden, everybody was happy again, including me. So, if this happens to you, you know where to travel to. Just close your eyes a minute and Tweedledee your way right back to feeling happy. And now, back to the Howdy Doody Circus. Pierre, hi. Hey, oh. hiya, Freddy. Hey, listen, our special guest has arrived. Oh, fine. Would you bring her right in? Right away. Okay. Remember, now every month, we present the Winchell Mahoney Achievement Award to some boy or girl in the United States. Yes, boys and girls, to one of you who has done something for the good of others, we present our Achievement Award. But today, instead of giving our award to one youngster, we're going to give it to 24. And here comes the young lady who represents that group. Freddie, would you bring her in, please? Right here. Jerry, Paul, I'd like to meet Joyce Levy, Girl Scout from Flushing, Long Island. Well, how do you do, Hi. Joyce? Oh, it's so nice to have you here, Joyce. Oh, she touched me. She touched me. <laughs> Easy. Uh, Joyce, uh, officially, I'd like you to meet Jerry Mahoney. Hello, Jerry. Hello, dear. How old are you? Thirteen. Are you married? Oh, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, tell me, what do you like about the Girl Scouts? Oh, lots of things. But I like Girl Scout cookies. Cookies? Yes, sir. <laughs> and this is the cutest cookie I ever saw. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think Jerry kind of likes you, Judge. Well, boys and girls, we're presenting our achievement award today to the Girl Scout troop to which Joyce belongs. Intermediate Troop 4382 of Flushing, New York. And we want you to know why we're presenting this award, so Joyce, would you please tell us your story? Well, five years ago, we adopted um, the Home for the Aged at Welfare Island, and the name has recently been changed to the Bird S. Kohler Memorial Hospital and Home. And what made you adopt uh, well, this particular home? Well, we adopted home? them because they didn't have any relatives or anyone um, at home, and we thought that we could cheer them up a little bit if we brought them presents. You mean these elderly folks? The elderly people there. Uh -huh. And um, each year, we go twice to um, the home at Easter time and at Thanksgiving time we bring them presents like once we brought some mittens for the um, wheelchair patients uh -huh. and we brought um, candy and talcum powder and scented soap and it sort of cheers them up and brings a little happiness to them and the girls really enjoy doing it. In other words, you and the whole troop get as much fun and satisfaction as the happy hours yeah. and the pleasure that you give to mm -hmm. these lonely elderly folks. Yeah. Well now isn't that a wonderful thing that these Girl Scouts did boys and girls? Huh? Yeah. Hey, Joyce, tell me, uh, are the other members of the troop here today with you? Yeah, they're all out there. Yeah? Well, let's see them. Turn the cameras around. They're sitting right out there in the audience. There they are, boys and girls. <laughs> this group of Girl Scouts is the group responsible for bringing a lot of happiness and a lot of pleasure to these lonely, elderly folks. I certainly think that was a wonderful thing that you all did. And now, Joyce, and to all the rest of you in the troop, for bringing cheer and kindness to those who were sick and lonely, for helping others with no thought of receiving any reward, and for living up to all the fine traditions of the Girl Scouts, we proudly present you with our Achievement Award. You there so you are, much. Joyce. Oh, you're yeah, welcome. Yeah. And wait a second, Joyce. That isn't all you're going to get. We're also going to give you 24 giant boxes of 50 rolls, one for each member of the two, oh. and for each of your mothers, you're going to receive three pairs of beautiful Ipswich hosiery, fashioned right and long-wearing. And I know that she'll enjoy Ipswich hosiery. And now for troop outings, we have 12 famous beacon cameras in colors of red, green, and ivory in this complete globetrotter kit. And for the troop, we also have, for the whole troop, and a complete set of the Encyclopedia Britannica Junior, the 15-volume home library for children published by the Encyclopedia Britannica. And also, for the entire troop to share, we'd like to present you with six genuine Schwinn Starlet bicycles, complete with tank, electric horn, and all the wonderful features that make Schwinn America's favorite bicycle. And now, kids, let's all sing three cheers to this fine group of Girl Scouts. Three cheers to you. Isn't that a wonderful thing those Girl Scouts did? Oh, they sure did. Gee, they were swell. They certainly were. You know, incidentally, boys and girls, this happens to be Girl Scout Week. Now, scouting is a wonderful adventure. You know, you'd have a lot of fun if you joined the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts, where you'd learn about wildlife and first aid and camping and, uh, and Morse code. Morse code? I know all about the Morse code. You do? Sure. In fact, I even got my sender here. Your sender? Now, Magic Cloud? Well, you know, Jack, I've been showing the boys and girls how to make pictures. Oh, you know, once every two or three weeks, I make one of these pictures for them. And today, I thought I'd make one that, to my mind, is very, very timely. I want you to watch this, Jack, too, because it's going to give, show you something really good. You know, boys and girls, this is the time of the year when we all start thinking about those wonderful, great, big turkey dinners, isn't it? Yeah. So, I'm going to tell you a little about a very, very, very early turkey dinner. You see, once upon a time, there was a fellow who looked something like this. And you tell me, if you can, just what this fellow is. An Indian. An Indian. An Indian. An Indian. Why, sure enough, as soon as you see those feathers, you know that he's an Indian. And do you know that Indians went to the very first turkey dinner there ever was? Did you know that? No. Well, they certainly did. And I'm going to show you about this Indian. He was an old friend of mine, this particular Indian. 
And I think he'll be a friend of every one of yours, too. Oh, he's a really fancy Indian, isn't he? Look at all these big fancy things he wears. He wears such fancy clothes and such a pretty big neck piece. And we have it right here. We'll... Oh, look at this neck piece. Look at that. My goodness. And then I have here something. It looks like an elephant's trunk, doesn't it? Yeah. And you watch. I'm going to put that right up here on this Indian friend of mine. This elephant's trunk, right like that. And I think I have a couple little pieces over here that are really, these are sort of funny pieces. We'll put one of these pieces, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll put one over here like this, and we'll put another one up here like this. Now, that doesn't look much like an Indian now, does it? So I'll tell you what. I'm going to turn it over, just like this. And what have we got? A turkey. Why, there's a great big fat turkey. What do you think of that? I just hope you get your 50 cents back. <laughs> Assaulting an officer of the law, are you? Well, I think I'd better just run you in for that. Oh, I didn't mean it, Mr. Stack. Well, in that case, maybe I'll give you another chance. <laughs> How you, Dagmar? I'm fine. Say, why aren't you in school today? Well, you see, oh, well, uh, this afternoon I didn't exactly feel well. Uh, so I asked Mama if I could stay home. Oh, but now you're feeling better again, huh? I guess I am. Dagmar, you're a fraud. Oh, no, Mr. Stack. What was it? An arithmetic test? Spelling. Oh, but, but, but I did feel terrible. I'm sure you did. <laughs> Have you caught any burglars lately? Well, I just now caught six of them. Honest? Mm -hmm. They were after a box of all-day suckers right here in Keezy's drugstore. I think you're fibbing, Mr. Sack. Well, you're a fine one to talk. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Here comes my mother and my Aunt Jenny. Well, what's all the excitement? Oh, I just don't want my mother to see me, Mr. Uh, Stack. What? Please don't tell her that you have... What's going on here? Please don't, Mr. Stack. Well, if you think fortune tellers are all fakers, you just ask Mrs. Janstruz. Because even before she saw her husband, he was foretold to you in the tea leaves. Yeah, but anybody can say you're going to meet a man. Yes, but some girls don't. Oh, there is Mr. Stack. Hello, Mr. Stack. Well, how do you do, lady? How Hello, do you Mr. Do? Stack. Have you got gray hair, Mr. Stack? Well, not when I started out this morning. <laughs> I was just showing him to prove my, my sister and that it is very easy for a fortune teller to say that you are going to meet a gray-haired man. <laughs> well, that's not me for a few years yet. Distinguished <laughs> also, she said, Martha. Oh, well, that ain't me ever. <laughs> <laughs> Good day, Good day, Good day to you, ladies. <laughs> I thought you told me you told your mother that you didn't feel well. Oh, I did. Don't she you? She wouldn't let me stay home from school anyway. Don't you know that playing hooky is a very serious thing? Oh, I know. I ought to tell your mom, Pa. Oh, please don't, Mr. Stack. I won't ever do it again. Well, I'll give you one more chat. Oh, thanks, Mr. Stack. <laughs> minute. There you can stay long enough to have a cup of coffee. Are you looking for the million dollars someone is going to send you? I was just looking to see if there's any mail for me. <laughs> oh, yes, one bill. And did the fortune teller tell you you were going to get that too? You will see what I will get. <laughs> Mr. Beecher, he has a letter from his sweetheart. Oh, and which one of your boarders is Mr. Beecher? The lighting company. Oh. Yeah, you must not read other people's mail. Oh, I'm only looking to see who it is for. Mm. Oh, What's the it? nerve. What's the matter? Listen, having a wonderful time. Wish you were here. Mm. Would say more, but one never knows what nosy people are going to read this card. And the nerve. <laughs> well, I'm glad you think that it is funny. But it is, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> I guess maybe it is. <laughs> Oh, 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 Martha, 
Uh, would you like new wallpaper out here? What is the matter with this? No, that's three years old. Well, it's just good still. Well, I think I might like to change it. For the million dollars you are going to get? Nobody said I was going to get a million dollars. She said I was going to get a little money <laughs> and then a lot of money. Yeah, well, I would not wallpaper your house until I get it. Oh, bye, you're always such a kiddie all night. Uh, because these fortune tellers always tell people what they want to know. You ask if you're going to rent your room, but she tells you you are going to rent your room. To a man with gray hair and distinguished. <laughs> well, the next time you want to hear such foolishness, I will get my dad to do it for less than 50 cents. She makes up things, too. Madam Zodiac does not make up things. You will see. Yeah, I will be glad to see. <laughs> oh, the nerve of that postal. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Lisa, ma'am, and if you don't mind, I would like to rent your room. I think we've got more Super Circus fun for you right now, because all set in the center of the Super Circus arena is our ringmaster, Mr. Claude Gerster, who's all ready to blow the whistle that will start the Super Circus show. So come on, gang, let's get going! Ladies and gentlemen, and children of all ages, your Super Circus show is on once again with more laughs, thrills, and chills brought to you for your television entertainment and brought to you by Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, Kellogg's. And now the show is on as we direct your attention to the portable rigging right behind me here in ring number one. There we present one of the circus's most accomplished ladies, Miss Vivian Nelson! and the rigging parted and nothing really happened. Our stagehands are now putting the rigging back together again and uh, we'll see whether we'll have the finish of the act. Yes. I see that Miss, uh, Miss uh, Vivian Nelson wasn't injured. I knew she wouldn't be because she didn't fall very far. She didn't really fall at all. She just kind of eased to the ground. Now, here comes the other member of this very fine uh, cast. Uh, are the fellas going to hold there? Good. Well, then you'll see a few extra members, too, just holding the rigging together. Here's one of the most delightful 14-year-olds we've ever had the pleasure of presenting, Miss Christine. Come on, Chris. Mm -hmm. 